I know there's that whole war between America and the UK where, like, we tried to own you and there's spilt tea or whatever. I don't know. We don't really learn about it because we lost. But it's time for the real war. The real battle between America and UK. Who has a better taste in books? Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a video that sounds amazing in theory. I actually have zero idea how this is gonna work. <laughs> I've wanted to do a video for ages where we look at Waterstones and Barnes & Noble bestsellers and I see who has a better taste, but I don't, there's no parameters. We're just gonna kind of look at the books and chat about them. I've wanted to put these two against each other forever because here's the thing. I'm grateful for Waterstones as someone from the UK, right? I'm defensive of it, but I also do love a good Barnes and Noble. Whenever I go in America, I'm like, oh, Barnes and Noble. I wanna see how similar our bestsellers are between the UK and the US. I thought this would be an interesting thing to look at, make them battle it out against each other and then we will deem a winner. I don't know how, just, just on vibes basically. <laughs> If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, like, I honestly feel bad for you. Like, And see, maybe it's really similar. Maybe James, what's his name? I want to call him James Waterstones. The guy who owned Waterstones then has bought Barnes & Noble. What is his name? James Bond? No. I think he's to blame for that awful remodeling you guys are having in Barnes & Noble right now. I'm so sorry. James Daunt, there we go. It's because there's Daunt Books. Did he own Daunt Books? Oh my God, he's the founder of the Daunt Books chain. How has he done all this? What the hell? <laughs> okay. Founded Daunt Books, now owns Waterstones, now owns Barnes & Noble. This man is a book behemoth. <laughs> so yeah, I've got their bestseller books up. I have not looked at them yet. And I figure we'll just kind of switch between the two and see whose taste I think is better. Let's just begin. Right, opening up Waterstones. Okay, <laughs> they've got 10,000 items here. I'm not looking through 10,000 items of Waterstones, apologies. Top four, we've got Lessons in Chemistry, which has been a massive book. Like that has won awards, that's been massive. I don't, I still don't know if I'm gonna read it guys. What do you think? I'm unsure. And then we've got Board of Lunch, the healthy air fryer book. <laughs> People love that. Oh, it's half price. <laughs> <laughs> I can be tempted. People will love their air fryer at the moment. We have one and we've used it like three times. I really, really need to use it more. I might try and use it more. Then we've got Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Ginny McAllister, which I love. That's a five star thriller for me. I'm, I didn't realize it becomes popular, but actually I think it's Waterstones Thriller of the Month. So Waterstones have a fiction, a non-fiction, a thriller, and a kid's book of the month every month. So Wrong Place, Wrong Time is that, and they really push it in store. Like I've bought a few Waterstones Thriller of the Month in my time. Me when a Waterstones bookseller even slightly suggests I might like a book. And then what is this? A fortunate woman, a country doctor's story. What is this? Oh, okay. It was a non-fiction book for last month. Interesting. Relation between landscape, community, the role of medicine, society. Okay. Well, I could be tempted. <laughs> <laughs> that looks interesting though. Okay, so from the top four, this I feel like it's pretty typical UK books. Like they love lessons in chemistry and Waterstones. Oh, so I didn't see any of that. I didn't I scrolled down, but I didn't see any of it. This kind of book I don't think you would absolutely not see in Barnes and Noble's top whatever's. Interesting. Okay, let's look at maybe their top four. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> So, Happy Place by Emily Henry is their number one. I get the feeling that maybe Barnes & Noble are better at like updating us this and more stones. I don't know. I just think Barnes & Noble will probably have it together more than me. I don't know. I'm kind of just, I love Barnes & Noble, guys. I love it. I love that you have aisles of books. Whereas in Waterstones, you just have books on the wall and then tables. Whereas that makes it so hard to film. Whereas if you're in an aisle, you have secrecy. No one can see you. It's like private, intimate with a book. Whereas Waterstones, everyone can see you doing everything. I don't like that. Anyways, I still haven't read an Emily Henry. Do you guys think I should? Which Emily Henry should I start with? Um, so that's number one. Clanlands in New Zealand. What? And it's a pre-order. When does that come out? What? This comes out. Okay, so Happy Place comes out tomorrow when I'm filming this. Clanlands comes out in like two months. Why is a pre-order? I'm in a complete state of shock. I forgot what I was gonna say. That makes me suspicious that people can pay to be on these slots. I'm not gonna lie to you. This makes me very suspicious. As a detective, this makes me suspicious. I don't believe that. 
Can American people tell me, is this like a big thing? Do you see a lot of these books? I don't believe that. I do not believe that is number two. Anyways, number three. You can't joke about that. Why everything is funny, nothing is sacred, and we're all in this together. Is this like a cancel culture, like we hate cancel culture book? Oh my god, people are censoring themselves. Okay. 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 Interesting. I've never heard of this woman before. Don't know about that. That's something I've never seen. It's number three on their book size. Fourth Wing. What is that? That looks pretty. It's a pretty addition. Why have I never heard of this book? Why have I never seen? Is this like a TikTok book? Uh, it's like fantasy. What? I'm so confused. <laughs> it's beyond belief. It is just beyond belief. Why are there all these books I've never heard of? Okay, it's like a limited edition, limited print, special edition. It's a very beautiful edition, but I've never heard of this. There's many questions to be asked here. Okay, right, so that's their top four. Interesting. Surprised that it's two nonfiction, especially because of the, like, in the US, especially the, the rise of TikTok. I would have expected to see, like, a TikTok. I really thought clicking on Barnes & Noble would be, like, a Colleen Hoover in the top five, you know? Let's look at Waterstones next four. Wait, this is all we're doing, guys, but I think this is interesting. Market research. Oh, okay. Okay, so Murder Before Even Song is a uh, murder mystery by Reverend Richard Coles, who's like a famous celebrity, semi, you know, semi-famous. He's not like the biggest, he's probably like B-list, C-list, I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no shade. Um. Murder Mystery, which is, it's been published on the back of Richard Osman's success. They, they've made that Richard big and bold, baby. They're hoping people will think that's Richard Osman's Murder Mystery. <laughs> and it's a guy who exists in kind of the same circles of, you know, British TV. I can see what it's done, but I'm surprised. I suppose it's the paperback, people are buying the paperback. Cleopatra and Frankenstein, I have seen everywhere, but I have no idea what it's about but it's a very like, I mean, this whole section of these three just strike me as such like books you see on the tables in Waterstones. Like this kind of like literary fiction-esque book, like adjacent, literary fiction adjacent book is the kind of thing the British seem to fucking eat up and love. Oh, it's like a Sally Rooney-esque book, maybe? I don't know. That kind of turns me off a bit. Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Looks a bit naturey. Booker Prize, it looks like. Nominated. Although last year, Booker Prize. Winner? Winner? No, shortlisted. Okay. Historical fiction, Irish town there. That doesn't surprise me. And then How to Kill Your Family. I didn't realise it's been as successful as it has, but the people seem to love it. This is one that I've been vaguely interested in, but I just don't know if it's for me. Okay, next four for Barnes & Noble. I don't know how many we do this for, maybe like top 20, 15? Simply Lies by whoever this is, a David Mann. <laughs> like a thriller? It looks like a thriller. Detective, not interested. Why have we not seen a Colleen Hoover yet? Or like, I don't know, TikTok. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Name. What is this? Guys, this is not real. Barnes & Noble are shilling out for spots on their top 100. I'm convinced. What? It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. Like, none of the British ones have surprised me. Maybe it's because I'm just, I'm not American. And like, the British ones, some of you will be like, I've never heard of this one, never heard of this one. These don't surprise me because I know the lay of the land in the UK. But like, what is this? It's like another fantasy romance-esque book, but I've never heard of it. I don't believe this. <laughs> it just, it does it, oh wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, your dates. I was like, it doesn't come out for like 10 years. <laughs> when does that one come out? Wait, the Clownlands one that's second, if we're doing, you ca- hang on, I'm getting really confused as to- that doesn't come out to the end of the year. That comes out at the end of the year. That is not true. <laughs> You're lying to me. Okay, this is one I believe. Oh, and then we've got lessons of chemistry. Let's talk about these together. I believe the last thing he told me because the TV show for this has just come out on Apple. So like that, I completely believe, completely buy into that. Yep, okay. And Lessons in Chemistry, again, Barnes and Noble for last year. These are believable. That, the Ashes and the Star-Cursed King being above them is a lie. It's a lie. 
It's a lie. Okay, turns out this is actually quite a popular book that I'd just never heard of, so it might not be a lie, but I stand by my statement that there is something suspicious about these rankings. If you don't know, when you go into WH Smith in the UK, I don't know if they still do this, but those spots, they have like a top books, whatever. Those spots on that, like number one, number two, number three, used to be paid for. That well, That's not real. That's like who's paid the most money. Next one. The French Braid by Anne Tyler, never heard of it. Heartstopper, not surprised. Bluey, not surprised. This is what, I believe this. I believe that parents are going there and buying Bluey. Stephen King pre-order, not surprised. Does that come out soon? Mm, not really. But that doesn't surprise me. Whereas the clan, <laughs> I'm sure are very popular. But like, Stephen King doesn't surprise me, especially if this is this edition has just been released. I have no idea what this is though. French Braid by Anne Tyler. Bear in mind I haven't been in a war zones recently. This has come out in the last couple weeks. Pulitzer Prize, Booker Prize. Okay, this is another one for the literary fiction girlies, the clever girlies. Family saga from the 1950s. Okay, none of this surprised me. Hearts for being so high, absolutely. Bluey, you gotta love Bluey. <laughs> that future awaits me when I have kids. Okay, next four here. Oh, okay, the, okay, right, 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 right. Here we go. I'm starting to believe this. Sarah J Maas, yeah, okay. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Where have you bloody been? Finally, we got some TikTok books in here. My God, it only took us to the top 10, wow. <laughs> yeah, I thought Sarah J Maas would be on here. The girlies love her. I've never read a Sarah J Maas, so moving on. The Sun and the Star, oh, Rick Riordan. Ugh. Now, now I believe, the, no, I refuse to believe the Ashes and the Star Cursed King. Um, these I'm dubious about, but like that one in particular, I just refuse to believe it. The fourth, fourth wing uh, above Sarah J Maas, I refuse to believe it. Yeah, Rick Riordan, everyone loves him. Oh, and then this twisted, oh, hang on, we got, we've only gone top 12 on Boss <laughs> Twisted, whatever, another TikTok girly. Finally, finally, the TikTok, you know, people got some representation. Very vastly underrepresented on our bookstore. <laughs> Okay, next four here. Anne Cleves is a big UK author, or like very popular in the UK, I don't know where she's from, never read her. Isn't she got, isn't it? Yes, Vera Stanhope is like the detective. Interesting, I might like this. She's like another famous detective, like Praro, kind of Vera. I swear she's, yeah, she's a TV show. Here she is. Hey Vera. The bookseller of, this has just come out, Scottish, Waterstone Scottish Book of the Month for March. I didn't know they had a Scottish Book of the Month. That explains that. See, Waterstones has an explanation for every book that's on this list, I understand it. Barnes and Noble. Bombastic side eye. Criminal of- I'm just a bit suspicious. <laughs> that looks interesting. Crime novel. Stranger dead. Ooh. Hmm, I'm keeping an eye on you. The cats we meet along the way. Hold up. <laughs> I love cats. True, winner of the Children's Book Prize 2023. That's why it's won. <gasps> this is a kid's book, but like, I might have to dabble. <laughs> that looks so cute. Eventful road trip across Malaysia to find her at straight. <gasps> oh, that looks so cute. Okay. And then we have Seven Husbands, Evelyn Hugo. Oh. I remember when I had to go to America to buy The Seven Husbands of Evan Hugo because it like was not sold in the UK and I wanted to read it so bad. And when I went to America, I got my copy there. And it's like one of those ones with like the weird cover where like the front cover doesn't extend as long as the book. It's one of those. And I just, I'm so, I love Evelyn Hugo. I am quaking in my boots that it's going to be a movie and not a TV show though. Like, why would you do that when you've got an episode of Her Husband right in front of you? Next four for Barnes & Noble, we've got two more twisted. <laughs> I didn't know these were that popular, but okay. The girlies love a bit of, love something twisted. <laughs> the Wager, a tale of shipwreck, mutiny, and murder. Mm. <laughs> Your America's books are so expensive. I feel so sorry for you. We're very lucky in the UK with how cheap our books are. Do I believe that you're really here? I suppose, okay, I'm gonna extend the benefit of the doubt. And another twist, okay. <laughs> oh my God, there's four twisted whatever books in the top 16 and no Colleen Hoover. Had the girlies just bought up all the Colleen Hoover already and so they don't need to buy them again? Perhaps. Okay, let's do one more round. Let's do top 20 for each. Wow, UK got to Colleen Hoover before the US. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> 
can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. I am living in a state of shock. Oh my God, okay. Uh, and then we've got Daisy Jones and the Six. Absolutely, Taylor Jenkins Reid having two in the top 20 makes so much sense to me, absolutely. Then we have another kids book. We have The Dinosaur That Pooped Easter by Tom Fletcher and Dougie Pointer. If you don't know, they are members of a very popular boy band, boy band, band, uh, in the UK called McFly. They're big in the noughties. It's like Tom's thing. He writes a lot. Like he did the dinosaur that pooped. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> There's lots of dinosaurs that pooped. Here we go. Oh, okay. They write it together, this whole series. He's written so many books. Like what? Why does he have so many books? Tom Fletcher. I bet he's raking it in. Because here's the thing, right? His fan base is now parents of young kids, right? Because like I was, when McFly were popular, they, I think they came out when I was like five, right? And if you're even a little bit older than me, like say you were 10 when they came out, you're five years older than me, you're like 28, right? You're having kids, whatever, you know? So like he, that's so clever. What a business mindset. What a girl boss you are, Tom Fletcher, to bring out kids books when the parents who are your fans are gonna be buying them. That's clever. And then finally, Spare by Prince Harry. I'm not surprised. I still haven't read it. <laughs> I got the, I pre-ordered the audiobook and I started on the day it came out and I was like, actually, you know what? I'm good. And then I'm, I am gonna read it though. I'll read it soon. This year. Okay, last top 20. If I don't see a Colleen Hoover in this top 20, I'm gonna, f I will deactivate, no, I'm not gonna deactivate my channel. Let's not say that. But like, I will be really surprised Okay, there's obviously something I'm not understanding because we have another, maybe that book is really on here because we have The Serpent and the Wings of Night. Is this a TikTok thing? This must be a TikTok thing because that's the second, this, the fact that Taylor Jenkins read, you know, Colleen Hoover, not that I like her, but Colleen Hoover, like all these big authors don't have a single book yet in the top 20 and this woman has two. This must be a TikTok thing. I'm... I'm confused because I don't even like the covers. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, King of Pride. Oh, it's by that author. The girlies love Anna. The girlies love Anna. Oh my gosh. Okay. We got a Colleen Hoover. My God. Only took us number 19. Special collector's edition. And then, oh, in the lives of, sorry, I just really knocked you. In the lives of puppets by TJ Clune. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I have that on pre-order. Yeah, okay, wow, I, I believe that. Okay, who do I think had the better top 20? I think Warstones did, I'm sorry. Like, Sarah J Maas, you know, just, just, this, this doesn't excite me as much as this does. Like, Wrong Place, Wrong Time, Reverend Richard Coles, How to Kill Families, Interesting Heart Stopper, like, Evan Hugo. There's, this is a more exciting top 20, in my opinion. I think Waterstones win. Not that I'm biased or anything. <laughs> the British win. But that was really interesting. That's not what I expected. See, uh, the Waterstones one, I also like because it's not confusing me because I know where all of these books have come from. Every book on here, there's an explanation. Like they're either the thriller of the month or the nonfiction of last month or this month or their heart stopper. Do you know what I mean? Whereas there's books on here that are getting major side eye from me, that I just don't, I just, I'm a bit suspicious. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun and let me know what you thought these top 20 lists and who you think had a better top 20. Um, and let me know if you've read any of the books that I had never heard of and what you thought of them. And like, please, if you're American, give me some you know insight into why Fourth Wing, what has she written? What has this author written before? Why is that number four? That is like, you know, reminds me of the Atlas Six kind of fantasy. And then this is, I am, I am, I should not have clicked on her author thing because I'm even more confused right now. <laughs> Please give me some insight on the Barnes and Noble list because I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you got to the end of the video, comment a confused face emoji because <laughs> I'm a little bit confused. And I'll see you again in another video. Bye.